Hey everyone, Token Dave over here. I'm Dorky Token Black Guy who's just trying to get by. And welcome to Marvel Madness. So, for the rest of the month of March, I will predominantly be talking about movies that are based off of Marvel Comics properties, but are not part of the MCU. So, when you see anything that I have related to a Marvel movie, you know, Notice how it won't have Marvel Studios in the front. That's because Marvel Studios is the MCU, guys. Just a little heads up. So, for the past 20 years, we've pretty much been in a comic book boom in movies. You know, almost every major blockbuster or action movie, a vast majority of them, have been, like, you know, adaptations of, you know, major superheroes. You know, movies like X-Men, Spider-Man, Batman, Green Lantern, you know. All of those are based or comic book based movies or movies based in comic books. And we have the comic book boom, you know, all started with one particular movie back in 1998. Oh yeah. I'm talking about Blade, y'all. So, for those that don't know, basically, you know, the movie Blade is about, you know, Eric Brooks, whose real name is not mentioned in the movie, by the way, but, you know, he he is the titular character, Blade. The half-man, half-vampire, who actually hunts vampires on, on a 24-7 basis. And in the movie, his main antagonist is Deacon Frost. A half-breed vampire that is highly ambitious and is seeking an ancient, is seeking an ancient myth that will allow him to have extreme and extraordinary power. And the only person that could stand in his way and is causing him any issues is none other than our day-walking vampire hunter, Blade. Now, for those that don't know, basically. The movie Blade, you know, um, it was a surprise hit, you know. First off, not only was it a surprise hit because, like, you know, it was a comic book-based movie, but it was not your traditional comic book-based movie. This was a vampire action horror-like horror movie. Well, not really horror, but within the horror genre, you know, and its lead character was a minority, you know, so that was like, you know, that was, that that blew a lot of people's minds back in the 90s, and this particular movie, like, you know, blew minds all over the place for various reasons, you know, like I said, this is the, this movie actually, you know, had an African American in the lead, which is my, my hero, you know, and the person that I used to look up to as a kid, Wesley Snipes, playing Blade, you know. And, you know, basically, you know, if you saw my comic book origins, you know, you heard me say that Blade was, like, basically the shaft of vampire killers. And, you know, Wesley Snipes was perfect in this role to be cast as his character. You know, he has a, he has a huge smart mouth, you know. He has this dangerous allure to him and he don't take crap from anyone and you know so of course was he snipes perfect for this role but you know the whole movie is not just was he snipes you know we have uh we have interesting characters with it within this movie with his mentor Wessler, played by chris kristanoff you know whom is if I remember correctly, he's a country, he's mainly known as, like, you know, a country music star. And, um, not gonna lie, don't know much about country music. And, um, you know, so, basically, this was the movie that introduced me to him. And, basically, you know, he does have that, like, you know, you know, country guy swag, you know. You see, you see Whistler drinking Jack Daniels all the time, you know, he has his little twang, and, you know, he has this, like, you know, um, badass, like, you know, you know, take no shit, western cowboy, like, mochismo and all. 
We also have basically, you know, uh, I keep forgetting how to pronounce her name, but Nabush Wright, if I pronounce that correctly, you know, but she plays like Karen, you know, uh, a victim, a uh, vampire bite victim who is actually thrown into the mix of everything. And it was interesting. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's the little sister. It's, I mean, it's the older sister from Fresh, you know? I was like, holy shit, this is a chick from Fresh. This is a chick from Dead Presidents. Nice to see her that she got some decent work in this period of time, you know? But that's not it because we had, like, you know, Donald Logan, one of my favorite character actors, you know, portraying Quinn, you know? Quinn is like the Weasley vampire and everything or the Weasley henchman that basically, like, you know, is cool with the lead villain and, like, you know, is, like, you know... Um, always trying to be interrogated and everything. And there's a bit of a running joke of within the movie of how he's losing a limb. But of course, we got we also have Steven Dorf as Deacon Frost, which I'm like, wait, Steven Dorf? Glenn? Glenn from the gate? Yes, Glenn from the gate is Deacon Frost, the lead antagonist. Who's mixed, you know, uh there are times where he's a really great antagonist, and there are times where he's just so aggravating and annoying, you just want him to shut the fuck up, you know? But we got cool characters within this, and also a surprise cameo by Rach by um, Tracy Lord. And I'm like, that's Tracy Lord? Really? Whoa. Oh, well, it's, it's... People have transitioned from that industry to this one, so yeah. But anyway, that's enough of the characters, which I went on for about four minutes about. What else is it that makes this movie awesome? Well, particularly, you know, I gotta say that the music of this movie, you know, the soundtrack, you know, is awesome. You know, it's mostly like, you know, a lot of 90s rave or, or techno that you hear. But God damn, is it awesome. You know, everyone actually... Um, the opening, the opening scene when within the club, everyone frequently still uses that theme, and not for anything, you know. I, 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 I feel the need to like, you know, wait here. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. Like I wanna do, do, do. I'm like, yeah, 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 and everything, you know. So yeah, the opening theme and like, you know, a lot of the um, music soundtrack is amazeballs. Top it off, the cinematography is actually really goddamn good. You know, especially there are times where they use the speed up, the way they use the speed up for like, you know, from night turning into day or day turning into night and people going throughout the city. You know, that was pretty freaking interesting. And like, you know, it's usually used as a cheap gimmick, but they made that to, they use that effectively within this movie. To top it off, you know, the fight choreography is amazing and post powder Oh my god. One of the things about Wesley Snipes, you know, being a martial artist himself and everything, almost every time he gets to display his martial arts prowess in any movie, it's a treat. And this is actually one of the best choreographed movies he actually did. And it is a blast watching him, like, basically, you know, do his hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques and his kicking moves, and also, like, you know, for someone that actually does a lot of Japanese martial arts, his, um, hand movements, you know, have this decent fluidity, like, you know, as a Wing Chun stylist, you know. Oh, and to top it off, not only is the martial arts, um, excellent, but the sword fight within this movie is also pretty damn cool, you know. Are there any drawbacks to this movie? Uh, well, yes, there are. You know, the plot is fairly simple, you know, and basically towards the end, it got a little predictable, you know, and the special effects. Now, the special effects are pretty much from the 90s and everything. You expected them to age, and, like, they did, and there are 50-50, you know. Uh, CG could be really... Could be kind of there, glaring, could be kind of distracting, but compared to a lot of other movies, you know, it's not as bad and not as outdated, you know. I also mention, I'll repeat that, you know, the antagonist, Deacon Frost, 
has a range, basically. He There are times that he's really good, and there's times that he's really annoying, you know. But, you know, we got great action, great, uh, fun plot, awesome music, cool characters, and to top it off, a movie that doesn't drag. It actually moves fairly quickly. Guys, Blade is amazeballs. No wonder why we're in the comic book boom, because this was the movie that started it off, and this was the movie that actually kept it going, you know? Well, the franchise that kept it going. Agree? Disagree? Drop me a comment below. Give me a like. Follow me on Facebook at Token Dave or on Twitter at Token Dave 80. Subscribe and ring that bell so you know when a new video loads. But until then, this has been Token Dave, the Doki Token Black Guy who's just trying to get by, and I'll catch all of you later.